So my name is Jonathan Henderson. I have the honor of being the LUGPA president this year. And that is my disclosure germane to this presentation. The LUGPA is a trade organization. I think that bears a moment of uh, explanation because it's not a normal medical association like the AUA or the AMA where the members are the physicians. We're more like the American Home Builders Association, if you will, or the, or the Auto Dealers Association, where our practices are the members of the association. And that has some allowances for things that we can do, and also has some restrictions for some things that we can't do. So it's really just a totally different beast than a member organization. And we've been around since 2008, and the name originally stood for the Large Urology Group Practice Association. Over time, we realized that, you know, size really wasn't why we were together. Why we banded together was to preserve the independent practice of urology. And if that was our mission, why not bring everybody in the tent? So we changed our membership allowance to any size. We have a one-man group in our organization. And as long as you are an independent practitioner and dedicated to that, then we want you in our tent. Because we believe that the economic heterogeneity of the practice of urology is essential for the future of our profession in the United States. It's important to continue to have every practice style. So LUGPA's core values are quality, collaboration, innovation, and integrity. And I think these speak for themselves, and they're probably similar to what you would see in any organization. But I want to highlight the integrity part. Because I think we all understand that the physician doesn't enjoy the reputation that he did 40 or 50 years ago. And it's up to us to regain that. And if we don't have integrity as people and as organization, we're not only hurting the patients, but we're hurting ourselves. Our strategic priorities are, as you see here, with advocacy and health policy being the first because they are the most important. That is truly what kicked us off. It's the changes that come out of Washington that drive our practices to react. So we wanted to get ahead of that and help drive those changes in Washington and help morph the future into where we wanted it to be. So instead of skating to where the puck was going to be, we wanted to decide where the puck was going to be. Value-based care is something that we applauded when MACRA came out. Uh, our practices are built to embrace value-based care. Our motto unofficially has always been, we do it better, faster, and cheaper. Now, what better way to define value care? And that's what we, we are aiming to do and continue to do. And so we are, as Dr. Kapoor said yesterday, we hope to be on the forefront, forefront of whatever disruptive technology comes along and saves us from becoming a unified single payer system in the United States. I'll go over the practice benchmarking in a moment. And then the leadership development has been a new development itself with Dr. Albala's uh, initiative to help develop future leaders in our specialty. So how does LUGPA support independent urology groups nationwide? Well, again, advocacy you heard about yesterday. We collaborate very well. You know, LUGPA has started with a, a single annual meeting that the, the importance of that meeting was the networking, the collaboration, the sharing of ideas. And from that, we've morphed into what we are now. And we continue to do that in providing uh, interchange of clinical training amongst our groups. One of the core principles that has made our groups, every one of them successful, is this dyad leadership model. And this may be something that's not familiar to some of you, but it's very simple. And what it means is our groups are run by two people. We have a physician leader and we have an administrator. And those two work together and we have found that that leadership dyad makes for a stronger group where we have better healthcare delivery and better business economics both. As I said, uh, Dr. Albala has taken on the task of training new members, no, I'm sorry, new leaders for the future. Best practices is something that we have, um, you know, for the most part stayed out of the way of the AUA, but we worked with the AUA in, in the education best practice environment. But from time to time, we have and will continue to do so, uh, offer our opinion on what back best practices are. 
We started a residence program a few years ago, and some of you may remember back when um, Norwich Eaton did a resident program and then Bayer did it for a little while and that was absent for a while and the idea is to have something for the chief residents to go to to learn a little bit more about the business of medicine coding and billing and stuff like that in addition to other opportunities such as independent practice that are out there so any of you program directors or chairs I would encourage you to please uh, let your residents come to our meeting uh, so far the reviews we've gotten have been pretty fantastic and um, we'll go into our third year of that this next year. Dr. Selinger is in charge of that currently, so you can uh, touch base with him here on that one. Um, Dr. Goldfisher came up with an idea a few years back of having what we call a playbook. You know, ha ha what about a, a recipe book for what we do in urology? And so we published that, and it's now in its second edition. And it has it had a great first edition, even better second edition. I would encourage any of you interested to go to Amazon and check this out. If you have a question about how a practice is run or should be run, um, it's in there. It's a great recipe book. And in my practice, our uh, billing office, not uncommonly, will flip open to the billing pages and just see what it says. So our benchmarking program is something we're very proud of. Um, what we've done is we have a majority of our practices contributing data. And these data, got this auto advance. These data can, uh, are, are correlated and parsed out so that we understand what the true benchmarks of our specialty are in independent practice. Right now, what we use, what most people, people use, is MGMA. And, you know, that's a huge sample across the country of all specialties, but a very tiny group of urologists, like 100 urologists in the whole MGMA sample, across all sorts of practice types. Uh, what we have been able to do is collect meaningful data from LUGPA groups so that we understand what is the normal number of, say, FTEs per doctor, or what of each administrative role, how many roles do you need per doctor to help you manage an efficient practice, but also understand, you know, what our colleagues are doing as far as how many cystoscopes or prostate biopsies the average urologist does in a month, how many RVUs they do in a year, things like that. So the benchmarking program has truly raised the bar because if you know how everybody else is doing things, it allows you to get with the program. Again, this is Dr. Albali's initiative, the Executive Leadership Program. Um, so far going gangbusters, having stellar reviews. And hats off to Dr. Albala for initiating that because truly it is our, de our desire and uh, duty to train the future leaders in our organization and in our specialty. Uh, we currently have a journal that we uh, co-brand with Reviews in Urology. What does the LUCPA future look like? Um, innovation's always on the, on the radar. Cost containment pressures, uh, value-based medicine is something that we're going to want to continually be involved in. Um, we think that we enable the practice to balance medicine and the business of healthcare so that Physician, urologists do not get overwhelmed by macro and rack audits and pathway adherence and electronic medical records and ignore the patient so that we can lighten that load a little bit and allow urologists to focus more on patient care. So what challenges do we see coming up? It's the same old usual faces, uh, edicts from D.C., Stark reform, things of that nature. I'll highlight this one here, the perfect storm that's come up, and we're all aware of this. We have a manpower shortage with 277 guys and gals coming out of the residency every year, with uh, about 2,000 to 3,000 job openings currently in the United States, with the average age of urologists being 58, and with the average urologist saying he intends to retire within three years to five years. Add that to the silver tsunami, what are we going to do? How do we see the patients that, that are coming down the, the road in the future? So, uh, and then burnout, that's a whole nother bag of chips. No, no one's figured that one out yet. And um, I, I, so far as I can tell, this work-life balance term, whatever that means, is not the answer. Our signature event is our, our annual meeting. That's what started us off, and that continues to be our main foundation. Dr. Salinger has arranged an amazing event this year in November. You can see what we've got going on there. But even though we've got a stellar agenda, the sentinel event of, of that event is the fact that we all get together and cross-pollinate and share ideas. 
So this past year, we had a, a great adaptation for the, uh, for the COVID cocoon. We developed a great virtual education program. We had uh, practice administrator luncheons monthly, where virtually they get together and talk about how to manage the practice. Uh, Dr. Concepcion and I came up with a, a true grand rounds around the practice, we call it, where we have one or two sentinel cases that are discussed by multi-discipline um, uh, experts, and we want to reach out there to all the guys in the hinterlands who don't have access to a true grand rounds so that they can participate virtually and even share cases with us to have a true grand rounds experience about discussing their, their difficult cases. Dr. Shore has, uh, for about five years, had our EuroCare Live series where we have um, experts discuss things like the use of IOs in bladder cancer. Our on-demand on webinars have been well received with 100 to 300 participants. If you look at the date on the, uh, the most favored nation, when that rule dropped at the end of the Trump term, within a couple of days we had a webinar instructing our practices on what this was going to mean to them if it came to be. That's the kind of speed and rapid response that we have to things like this. Every year we have a coding update with the same responsiveness uh, that comes out usually within a week or so of the codes dropping to prepare our practices of what the code changes will mean for next year. So in short, you know, LUGPA exists to preserve the independent practice of urology, but the things that we do as times have changed have become really germane to every practice of urology, whether you're academic, hospital-based, independent, or employed.